with your hosts, Not Afraid, Mike Cad, you will be. Welcome back. Hello, hello. Another week. Another week, absolutely. And and we're coming at it hard today. Big time. Yeah, seriously. I'm jumping out of my, my swivelly chair right here. I'm so excited. <laughs> I cannot wait. <laughs> I think I just almost stained myself. <laughs> TMI, Mr. Cam. You know why? You know, you know why? Because I, I I called him already. I talked to him for a brief second. Our big headline. Yeah. Guest. And how'd you kids get along? I, I was nervous. <laughs> oh my god. I was like, oh shit. I can't fuck this up. I gotta make sure this call. Do people even know what we're talking about yet? No. What are we talking about? We are about to have Barney Frank, Congressman. Pol- Congressman Barney Frank political hero of Massachusetts and beyond. Everyone with a progressive nay, a rational mind in this country, in this universe can uh, draw some serious inspiration from this man. He is a total hero to me um, and I know to you too. And a headline maker. I, and, yeah, all and, the time. Yeah. All the time. Never afraid to say what's on his mind. Kind of like uh, someone I know. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> I'm talking about you, Mr. Mike Cannon. Oh, really? Yeah. I, well... <laughs> I'm starting to learn sometimes that's not always the best thing. But um, yeah, Simpsons just walked we're in the door. Ho- Big Mike Simpsons here. Yep, we're not holding back today. That's yeah, for we're not sure. holding back. We have Barney Frank on the show in a little bit, very soon actually. That's why we're all kind of jumpy. He's always I'm, good too. I'm, I like, feel like I'm hitting puberty yeah. here with like. <laughs> we like uh, I've seen him so many times on like shows like Politically Incorrect and even the in the YouTube show. videos. He he's just a funny intelligent guy that that, yeah uh, yeah, definitely (laughs) (laughs) so yeah I mean like I said a total political hero of mine and uh, and we have some other uh, political heroes so to speak (laughs) or the or individuals who like to skewer uh, political heroes like literally like impale their heads on sticks and stuff that's uh, (laughs) that's Guar is coming on later in the show oh my god oh my god (laughs) That, that's, we got we, odorous. Odorous arungus. Yeah. I want to know what's like. That sounds like a yeah, like a. What, what is the combination of words there? Is a fungus of your? I don't. I don't want to know. I really don't want to know. <laughs> We're gonna find out. <laughs> We're gonna find out. I want to know who they're gonna impale I, this this Tuesday night I, at yeah. the Wilbur Theater. Who, I agree. Who, which, yeah. Is it a political figure? Is it gonna be Snooky again? Maybe it'll be Mike Cannon, Heather Mack. <laughs> Oh, we should be so lucky. I Some would love people to be would publicly pay flogged for. by by odorous. We'll have to we'll ask him. I, you yeah. might have the chance to I'd pay to see that. To be slimed and slathered with some uh, you know, speaking of stains and fluids, you you can also get the chance if you're listening in today to call in later in the show and win some free tickets to their show at the Wilbur Theater on March twentieth. That's this coming Tuesday. And uh, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. And Tuesday night at the Wilbur Theater. Mm-hmm. Thewilburtheater.com if you don't win tickets from us today. But we will definitely be giving an, at least two pairs of tickets away. That's awesome. And uh, 617-606-4122 is the phone number if you want to give us some calls, some instant feedback on our yeah, show. Today's the day. <laughs> yeah. And questions for our guests, of course. We're going to be taking some calls. Uh, we also have instant feedback. You can send direct online. It's if at unregularradio.com. Yes, yes. So we are very close to having Mr. Barney Frank on our show. Yes, we are. This yes, is- yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, How did this happen? How did we trick him into coming on the Pothead show? Like, how did this happen? <laughs> I'm blown away. What did, what did you have to do, Mike? That's what I want to know. <laughs> uh, there wasn't anything we did. We just asked, and he said yes. <laughs> I, think, I think, you know. He he's definitely a, a supporter of this of this cause, and our, and we have we have we have a good show going. So I think he was into it. Exactly, exactly. I'm very excited. I'm very pumped. But I still think that. I, <laughs> I mean, I I was watching I was watching some old clips of Barney Frank and and getting getting in the mood. I <laughs> I hope he's as pre- I hope he's prepared for us. And uh, and and I was <laughs> I'm specifically referring to the uh, the interview that he had with uh, with. 
Stephen Colbert a while back, and he was like, you know, these questions are just too silly. So we're going to try to keep it keep it official on this show. We're going to talk about, uh, we don't have a lot of time with Barney. So um, once again, get your instant feedback in. If you have something that you think is really pressing you want us to ask, please uh, contribute it. But we're going to go uh, hard hit and fast and furious and, and Today, try yeah. to keep it. Yeah, try to keep it. Uh, we already have some serious. questions, too, on the Facebook page. I know um, Lisa Boston had posted a great question. We'll try to ask that one. And I, I got to shout out Lisa Boston. She's at all the hearings for legalization. She's a good supporter of uh, the cause locally, Mass Normal. And our show, she always listens. I know she's always listening. I'd love to hear from her if she calls in today. 617-606-4122. Um, I also talked to uh, Jody Emery quickly today. Wow. Told her about uh, Congressman Frank and that I want to ask a question related to her. Mm -hmm. So hopefully uh, we get that in yep. in a few minutes. It's basically, uh, w we're going to play some music. Yep. We're going to play a great song. People Have the Power by Patti Smith. By Patti Smith. Yes. Which is uh, right up. I so believe good. it. Yeah, Kamalita will like this one. So she good. loves her. <laughs> She's met her. And um, then we're going to play a quick clip from Barney Frank, Congressman Frank. One of his, uh, it was a real you know, political event where he, he did this, but it's a, I call it a comedy click, it clip. Is. He, he's just a funny guy. Was it a real political event? <laughs> this it is was a his town, town hall, hall meeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was this is a town, town hall meeting. meeting. It, was, it seemed like it was a reality show, but it was not. Well, it was reality. <laughs> I'm, wondering, I'm wondering how much he had to pay know. that lady to ask the question the way no, she did. No, no. <laughs> you can't pay those You can't pay those people to go away. Are you you kidding me? LaRouchians outside of a market basket? You'll yeah, never leave. Back. You'll yeah. never escape. <laughs> then they call them tea partiers, and they weren't. They were Lelouchians, which oh, is totally man. different. It's like they, they showed up at a, a mass um, marijuana legalization hearing at one point, and <laughs> they uh, they acted like they were with us with mass can, and then they basically ripped us ripped the whole cause apart and the whole legalization. And afterwards, I, I went right up to them. I got it right in their faces, and I was like. Who who feeds you? Because I know how it works. Like they're basically like you know, a cult. <laughs> you should have asked. And if you if you don't do enough work for them that day, you don't get lunch. <laughs> right. You know. So that's why In, the lady. On asked, which planet are you currently residing? One, <laughs> I believe the, are the, the exact one, exact yeah. words from Barney Frank. <laughs> yeah. The one that uh, you have to uh, ask. Uh, you have to act crazy to get a uh, get lunch. That's I guess <laughs> the planet she's on. <laughs> we have a lot of those out in Boston. Probably today more than ever. Happy yep. St. Patrick's Day everybody yeah. Boston is exploding right now it was a miracle trying to get here but uh, we wanted I, I had to say happy happy St. Happy Patrick's, Saint Day, to all Patrick's our Day and we'll do some Irish <laughs> stuff later at the yeah, end we'll of the show yeah we'll have some Irish drinking green. songs and yeah. uh, <laughs> and, and uh, I think you're going to end the show with something too, yeah, good, yeah but we weren't going to give it all away no. 617-606-4122 <laughs> we're going to play that Patty Smith song we're going to play the Barney cl uh, Frank clip and hopefully when we come back we will be on himself. Unregular Radio Live with Congressman from Massachusetts, Barney Frank. All right. That was Congressman Barney Frank, who we are so excited to be welcoming to our show. He is a champion of progressive causes, realistic causes, logical causes, fighting for on the right side of, of justice and freedom, and we are thrilled to have him here. Welcome, welcome, Barney Frank. Thank you so much Thank for you. on our show. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad to have the opportunity to talk with you. Yeah, we're very excited to have you here. We're all we're all kind of freaking out. You're you're a personal hero of mine. I always have been, especially because of what we just heard. You never hold back. You are not afraid. There is no tongue to bite. <laughs> and that is, well, I appreciate it. that woman that I was addressing. There was a follower of Lyndon Larouche, and, <laughs> and you know, I don't want to blame the. I have great differences with the Tea Party, but I, I they, they generally don't go that far. This was uh, a part of that Lelouch group, which is really one of the worst elements in American politics. Yes, well, there's plenty of those uh, terrible elements in American politics. We're going we're gonna to ask you a little bit about that today. Um, but sure. First, uh, we, we, we kind of wanted to ask you, since you have been such you know, an outspoken, um, you know, proponent in terms of, you know, marijuana legalization, obviously, obviously gay rights, women's rights. Um, you're, you're leaving. This is your last term in Congress. And, uh, you know, all of us are going to miss you. Um, as, as activists that are still trying to, you know, make change statewide and federally, um, you know, who can we count on in the government, in Congress, um, to really represent these ideas? Well, there are different gone. issues. Uh, first, 
I expect to be still very active. Uh, and with regard particularly to marijuana, we're still in the advocacy stage there. Uh, you know, we are yet to the point where we've got the votes to pass the bill. By the way, I think if my colleagues voted what they really believed and understood, we, we could get uh, marijuana legalized. But I think it's a case of cultural lag. The, the, the politicians are still afraid that if they vote to allow adults to smoke marijuana, which would do those adults less damage than smoking cigarettes or drinking alcohol, both of which are legal, that somehow they'd be punished politically. I think the public's moved beyond that. Um, Absolutely. And, uh, but, but we don't yet have the vote, so I, I will still be doing the advocacy on that. On gay rights, uh, not being there, I won't be able to do it much. There, there are a couple of people. Uh, I think you're going to see uh, a couple of women, frankly, emerge. Um, Senator... Uh, Tammy Baldwin, if she wins the Senate race, and I hope she will, she's going to be the Democratic nominee in Wisconsin. And if she becomes the senator from Wisconsin, uh, the first openly gay lesbian person in the Senate, that'll be very helpful. And uh, the other thing I hope is that Christine Quinn, who's now the Speaker of the New York City Council, mm -hmm. who's uh, a lesbian married to a partner in New York or about to get married, she should be the next mayor in New York. And uh, those two, it'll be a case where two very articulate, thoughtful women will be in a position to do a great deal. Excellent. That's great. That's incredible. I, um, I, we have uh, some set of questions we were going to ask you, but just to add on to that, do you are you familiar with Maine State Rep. Diane Russell, too? Are you friends with her? Yes, I am. And, uh, in fact, I'm in Maine right now. My uh, my husband-to-be, Jim Reddy, in Oconquit. We're about Excellent. to leave uh, his house in Oconquit and go to a, uh, uh, a party that the Seacoast Democrats of Maine are going to have. But I expect to get very active this year. There's going to be a referendum in Maine, as you yeah. probably know, yeah. to uh, overturn the referendum which canceled out same-sex marriage. And, uh, in fact, I'll be meeting up with one of my colleagues with whom I'm very close to Congressman Michelle Pingree and her yeah. husband, and uh, she'll be in the lead on that and some others. And uh, I, I, I'm optimistic. I think we're going to be able to win that referendum in Maine this year and, and take back... Uh, Maine is a state where people can get married. Yeah, we certainly hope oh, so. Great. That, yeah, well, those are names we've... She she uh, she Shelly supported your marijuana legalization with Ron Paul. I mean, uh, that that's great. Um, with um, We also want to ask you about the, the current... You know, you're, you're leaving office, and a lot of people are talking about Joe Kennedy. Do you think he would support marijuana legalization? I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm very impressed with, with uh, Joe Kennedy's I hope going to win the uh, seat that I'm not running for. Um, and I, I honestly have not discussed that with him. Um, I think this is a case where the public has got to really let the, the, the elected officials know about it. You know, most of the time when we have referenda on this, the public shows itself much more enlightened than the, uh, than the politicians. I don't, that isn't always the case. Uh, you know, public opinion isn't always right in my judgment. It's right in the sense that in a democracy, the public is entitled to whatever it wants, but uh, I don't always think it's factually correct. But in this case, uh, the, the, the average citizen is uh, against locking people up because they smoke this substance that other people don't like. And um, I, I think what we're going to have to do is, I, I really urge everybody, write to every representative of every senator. And once they understand where public opinion is, I think we will move ahead on this. Absolutely. By the way, there's also good... You know, financial reasons for the conservatives. Although Ron Paul's an honest libertarian, Ron and I support legalizing marijuana just because adults ought to be able to do what they want to do without hurting anybody else. But marijuana prosecutions are very expensive. In New York, it was probably the single biggest cause of of, of arrest. Uh, uh, you know, I, I find some admirable things about my Mike Bloomberg, but on, on marijuana, he couldn't be more wrong. Uh, you you have this policy of uh, Arresting people, you clog the courts, there are yeah. people in prison for it. Yeah. Uh, it's just, among other things, an enormous waste of money and, of course, an intrusion on personal freedom. And finally, it's very discriminatory. You know, um, yep. I, I thought it was interesting in 2000, we had two presidential candidates, Al Gore and George Bush, both of whom had used substances mm -hmm. that are illegal. But neither one of them had the remotest chance of, of being uh, involved in the criminal justice system because they were the, the sons of very powerful political leaders. So you have a disproportionate record here of the enforcement of marijuana against uh, racial minorities or young people, uh, yep. you know, young Absolutely. white guys, yep. just because yep. Absolutely. Um, th there's a discriminatory aspect to it. People, yeah, who, people who can't fight back, who don't have yep. the means to... And even even generational. Um, yeah, right, a, well, the way I do it is to yep. let 
everybody know that you want them to vote that way. One of the things that I have some problems with, some of my liberal friends is, look, I, I think what the right-wing Supreme Court has done in overturning all these laws regulating campaigns, it's the worst kind of radical judicial activism, and it's kind of money threatens to corrupt our politics. Although it's ironic, some of these uh, very conservative Republicans were all for letting money flood the place. Now it's starting to bite them in the butt. Uh, like Rich Santorum and New Cambridge, they're complaining about these super PACs when they, of course, were advocates of, of allowing them to uh, to go. They thought they'd only go after liberal. They didn't realize that they could be uh, hit with them themselves. But I, I, it's a mistake to tell people that only money counts. Money counts for more than it should, and I'd like to cut it back. But I will tell you, from 40 years of experience as a legislator, if a large number of people in somebody's district get across that they want him or her to do something, then that's going to have an impact. You don't always win with it, but but if the average member of a legislative body is convinced that a large number of his constituents, or her constituents, feel strongly about something, that'll move them. Yeah, you just mentioned that. I mean, that's that's fantastic. That I mean, I you mentioned a few of the the current crop of. Uh, of political candidates that are running for president, and uh, you know Rick Santorum and and all of that. Um, what do you what do you think about what do you think about the political candidate you know candidate pool right now? And <laughs> in in uh, in the vein of of the clip we played where you uh, compared, <laughs> you don't have to go this far, but uh, <laughs> when you compared the woman that you were debating with to a dining room table, I'm wondering if there are any choice inanimate objects that you would <laughs> uh, use well, I, <laughs> to I, compare I, uh, to any of the political candidates. I I think, unfortunately, it is the case. What I said was, of course, trying to debate with her would be very frustrating because her mind was just dysfunctional <laughs> on the Republican side. What's happened is that the Republican Party has been taken over by the most rigid ideological extreme group that's ever controlled the party in American politics. Um, the, um, and, you know, people would ask me a few months ago who I would be for for the Republican nominee, and I would say, well, Cambridge, because he would be easier for the Democrats to beat, frankly, yeah. than Romney, because <laughs> Romney might appeal more to independents. But that's no longer the case. I've never seen anybody, frankly, disgrace himself uh, <laughs> on intellectual and, 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 and sort of moral grounds as much as Mitt Romney. This man has so pinned to the most extreme elements, he has so debased himself, that there is now no difference. And, and I give the American public credit. I Look, I... I, I've had a couple of bumper stickers in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't quite use. 2010, you know, it was very frustrating. Was Barack Obama inherited the worst economy ever uh, since the New Deal, not ever, but, but as bad as it, as it was in the Depression. I was just reading today a report that said, look, one of the issues was we had underestimated how badly the economy suffered in 2008 under George Bush, that the, that the decline in gross domestic product was greater than we thought. So the recovery has been slower because it started from a lower point. Um, and we get blamed for that, even though much of what we were able to do made things better. And I said two years ago, I was in a room with a bumper sticker, uh, because we had improved things, but of course not enough for political purposes. So I thought our slogan should be, things would have sucked worse without us. <laughs> uh, but this year, it's gotten better, because I think people see the improvement. There are obviously still some things about President Obama that, that they don't like, and I have a couple of disagreements with him. I think he's done a great job. But I think our slogan this year is a very easy one. If you look at this Tea Party group in the House of Representatives, if you look at Mitt Romney uh, and, and Santorum and Gig was talking this extreme right-wing nonsense, uh, I think our Democratic puppet sticker this year is a very clear one. We're not perfect, but they're nuts. <laughs> Awesome. I want to see you in a debate with all of them. I want to see you tearing them down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's that. What um, uh, we have another question about uh, Mark Emery. Do you are you familiar with Mark Emery, Congressman Frank? No. Um, he he was a, I, he's a man. I didn't have any question about where you were coming from. Yep. When you said Mark Emery, then I knew where, where you were. I'm talking to somebody from Massachusetts. No, yeah, <laughs> my accent, yeah, yeah. Mark, Mark, yeah. Mark, 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 let me try that again, Mark Emery. <laughs> Mark, no, look, I like your good Boston accent, I just wasn't sure for a minute. Uh, what you oh, yeah, okay. we're no, really... I don't think I know him, he, who, who or what does he do? He, uh, he's a gentleman that uh, runs a magazine up, he ran a magazine up in, uh, up in Canada, and he's a big activist for marijuana reform, 
And his activism, he sold seeds. He was selling seeds. Some of the seeds went to the United States. And he's in jail right now, in federal prison. And, you know, the DEA... The, yeah, the DEA, when they busted him, basically in their press well, release, they touted that they took him down and it was a big blow to the mar- marijuana reform activism. It seemed like they went after him for his activism because he stood up against well, Bush. I'm very disappointed. This is one of the areas where I have had... Uh, uh, disappointed with the Obama administration. Bill Clinton was better on this because, yep. one, we have states that allow marijuana to be used for medical purposes, and a couple of them are moving towards saying it's not criminal in general. And uh, the Clinton administration said, look, if that's what a state wants to do, we will prosecute. The Bush administration undid that, not surprisingly, and was prosecuting people. Uh, the Obama administration hasn't gone all the way back to as bad as Bush, but they're worse than they should be. They, they harass people and some, some conservative views as an excuse not to. Uh, but you mentioned this man's in federal prison. That's an example. You know, we have a problem with prison overcrowding. We we have a problem with too much uh, expense. Uh, the notion that they would do that is very troublesome. And I, I, I'm not surprised to hear that the DEA, even under President Obama, decided to go after this man because they want to stop the effort to allow adults to yep. smoke marijuana if they want to. The, uh, this is one of the weakest parts of the Obama record, in my judgment. And I personally... Uh, my partner Jim and I had a point for the president. He invited us after uh, I announced my retirement, and it's one of the points uh, we we made to him that we thought this is a great mistake in his administration. Yeah, I mean, why why do you think that he you know this has happened? Why do you think he's gone back on his promises? Um, you know, because he's afraid politically uh, if he doesn't. Right, it and, just seems uh, so. You have the the threat that he's going to be continue to be uh, soft on drugs. As I said. I, Twenty years ago, I understood politicians taking that position. Although I didn't agree, I found trying to be legislation to make marijuana smoking legal for adults uh, in 1972 when I first got elected to the state legislature. But um, the um, uh, by now, I, I have no sympathy for an elected official telling me, "Oh, well, you're right. Of course, we should allow people to smoke marijuana. And of course, it's if they do any one of the three, it's probably less damaging than." smoking cigarettes or drinking alcohol, both of which are legal, uh, the health effects of marijuana aren't as bad as tobacco. The behavioral effects of marijuana don't come close to being as, as disruptive as alcohol. But, uh, you know, people drink too much alcohol, they become uh, doubled by the drug This is the day to do it. <laughs> yesterday, who's a, a, a police officer, a federal police force, and he said, you know, we, 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 we've heard about bar brawls. I don't think anybody's ever talked about pot party brawls. Yeah, I know, huh? <laughs> right. No, n- none of them ever been reported. No overdoses, no pot party brawls. No, what happens is people, say people drink too much, they become problematic. They smoke too much marijuana, they fall asleep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're yeah. going to see they a lot of the book. problematic drinking today, too. It's a perfect example of what we're talking about. You know, we're here. in downtown Boston. It's a zoo. <laughs> it is a zoo. We, 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 we're in, inundated with people in green drinking and walking through. You know, they, they don't honor the fact that there's supposed to walk at a certain time they just take over the streets yeah we have their <laughs> festival and then we have our our pot festival and, and what what happens any any fist fights any you know any uh aggression well, like I said, if you tell a police officer he's got to go bust up a group of young guys um who've been drinking beer because they're making too much noise it's you know one o'clock in the morning in a residential area he's gonna go in there uh prepared to maybe use his mace or uh, even have his hand on his uh on, on his nightstick if you tell him he's got to go bust up a group of people who've been smoking marijuana, <laughs> uh, he's probably more likely to bring a couple of bags of potato chips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> Listen, I appreciate the chance to talk. Well, thank I'm you so have to wrap this up. Yes, but, definitely. Yes, thank you, thank very, you so much for your much time, for coming on. Representative Frank. Right, keep up the fire, please. Can I just leave, leave with one word? The people who agree with us, there are more of us than people think. Call and write and email your state legislators and your members of Congress. And if enough people do that, I'm convinced that we'll get somewhere with this. Okay? Absolutely. Thank you so much Thank for that. Thank you so much. He answered, our, he answered our last question before we get to ask it. <laughs> Thank you, Congressman Frank. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. That was awesome. That was amazing. Yeah. The phone line was a little shaky. I, I, I hope uh, I came off good, but uh, he, he's great. He was his, great. His, yeah, his uh, con- convictions are never shaky. So yeah, we did. I, I mean, I <laughs> loud got, and clear. I, we got all his words. We, we understood what he was saying, and uh, th- that was funny because the, like, the last part, the only part of the questions that we had all listed 
was the part of like what can people really do like what what yeah. should we be doing and he answers it at the end it's perfect he's he, a pro he's a, he's even a professional he is the this best is Barney this is Barney motherfucking Frank Barney Frank <laughs> Six six one seven six oh six four one two two. Yeah, Congressman fucking Van. Van. I'm so frank. I'm stuttering today. Six well, one seven six oh six four one two. We were doing pretty good. Yeah, we did good. That, that was, was like good. I. I'm gonna. We're gonna miss him so much in Massachusetts. But but you know what? I I know he's gonna be. Around. I know that he's gonna you be. You can tell he's gonna be. He, he was talking about Diane Russell and Shelley Pingree he's very and connected all the people all we the know. Right to all the right people. Yep. Joe um, Kennedy. He he he. He's, he's going to be around. Absolutely. And now he knows about Mark Emery. Yeah, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mark. He got me on that accent, didn't he? Yeah. He, he liked it, though. He, he was good with it. Uh, of course, he's from Mass. We can, <laughs> we can do that with him. Yeah. If we have someone else in, I might have to tone it down, huh? No. no. Oh, yeah, we're going to tone no. it down with Odorous Arungus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> we're getting geared up for that. We're interviewing. We got Guar coming up. A little bit later. So please, yeah, please call in. Sorry we couldn't take calls during that last interview. We only had a short amount of time. We hope we represented for the Hothead Nation. And we'll take your calls now, definitely. Yes, so absolutely. definitely, we, we missed a few calls, but uh, call us, 617-606-4122. Especially if you heard that and you want to comment on it. Mm -hmm. If there's anything you want to pass on to Rep. Frank, I'm sure he will listen to this later. Yes. Uh, give us a call. And also, we will be back. We're going to play some music. Mm -hmm. And we have those tickets. We're going to have... Tickets to Tuesday night's big show at the Wilbur Theater. Wilbur Theater, the Wilbur Theater dot com. It's Gua Tuesday night. And uh, what are we what are we gonna do for music? Now? We got a little Pearl Jam in my tree. Oh yeah. Some Billy Bragg and we'll be back after nice. that. Nice. Yeah.